everyone welcome to the webinar series that is being organized by youth pg together with uh, our speakers um, uh, mrs zarina ali uh, mrs zarina b and uh, altab khan mr altab khan um, so today's session we will have them uh, talking more on how um, uh, we can prepare ourselves in terms of personal branding as well as uh, during job interviews how our cvs should look and what are some of the industry requirements that are there? Um, so basically, today's session uh, we will be having Mrs. Zarina B, who will be talking to us, um, and then we'll, we will have uh, Mr. Altab Khan with his presentation on personal branding through LinkedIn and other platforms. And then we will have a 10-minute Q&A session where we will give uh, you guys a chance to um, put forward your questions for the speakers to answer and we will also give you an email which is uh, webinar at youthpg.org uh, where if after this meeting you have any questions any queries you can always email us at webinar at youthpg.org um, so uh, let me start with the brief introduction of our uh, speaker mrs zarina b so she has 22 years of industry experience at efl and 10 years out of this has been as a human resource practitioner. She is now utilizing her experience and knowledge towards nation building by sharing best practices in HR with her students at USP Pacific Tech as a, consult, uh, as a consultant course facilitator teaching evening classes. She is also a justice of peace, which enables her to give back to her community. Um, the other national duty that she is part of is the Fiji Business Excellence Awards. Uh, where she has been an evaluator for the last five years. Um, along these lines, she is also an active uh, community worker as well. She's part of uh, multiple NGOs. Um, she's also part of uh, a community uh, um, newspaper, which is a City Sun newspaper, and she uh, has a role of uh, uh, a director, and she, she's actively part of uh, putting up articles, and she's also a publisher there. So... Uh, without further delay, I would like to give this uh, uh, this time for Madam to actually speak to all the attendees that are here. At the moment, we have 38 attendees who have joined us. So we will be having more people joining us as we go along. Um, but uh, uh, Madam, the floor is now yours. You can uh, start with the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Shalil, for that um, um, you know, for that introduction, uh, just um, uh, something, uh, you know, that you added at the end, uh, the newspaper is actually the City Star newspaper, and I'm one of the directors, and I'm also, uh, I'm not the publisher, sorry, I'm just a marketing manager, and, uh, but I do actively participate also in the news articles uh, that is published in the newspaper. Okay, um, and then moving on, uh, let's come to this a very important topic uh, for today. Uh, and I wish to, first of all, acknowledge um, the work of this group, um, excellent work uh, for the youths of this country uh, and uh, in preparing them for the future, especially during these uncertain times. It's actually an excellent initiative. And... Uh, um, I'm I'm very happy that I've been invited to be a part of this, uh, and I hope I can, um, you know, assist the youths that are part of this forum today. Uh, and uh, once again, to everybody who is a part of this initiative, uh, thank you very much. Excellent work. So um, in this one, I know uh, we have we would have some students in this. Uh, maybe from tertiary, other students who are uh, probably high school students, uh, also those uh, who are already in the job market. Maybe there are some people who have lost uh, jobs during this pandemic. Some people, you know, who are actually working from home while some have reduced hours. So um, uh, all kinds of people here. And uh, thank you for joining this today. Um, I hope you get some valuable information from here. I hope we are able to assist you 
uh, both myself and the next speaker, uh, Mr. Altab Khan, uh, who, who has also loads of information that he can assist you with. Now, um, let's start um, with, the, with the current situation, which is COVID-19, uh, that I've also mentioned to you. Um, uncertain times for all of us, but then this is also a time for reflection. So, uh, and it's also given us the time to actually prepare ourselves. Uh, but then that is on your own personal perspectives on how you have taken this. Uh, we can take, um, you can either be negative about it or you can be positive about it. So uh, COVID-19, yes, it has given us a bit more time with our families. We are at home, working from home, most of us. Uh, those who have lost their jobs, uh, they've also looked at uh, alternative uh, things to do, which I, I, from what I know, uh, this forum will later on bring you uh, some other um, such initiatives where you will be able to learn about entrepreneurship. Uh, so uh, there's something here for everybody. So how did we prepare ourselves? So how are we preparing ourselves for the new normal is what is the question. So basically what that means is how are we preparing uh, for our jobs um, in the near future? So if uh, for some of us, uh, we, we have not sat back and just waited. Uh, what we've done is we've, um, I know a lot of people who have actually taken this opportunity to resume studies, restart their studies or continue with their studies because uh, that is actually what is going to build your strength or put you above the rest when the job markets get flooded again in the new normal. Uh, and that is definitely the way to go. Um, I hope uh, everybody has been following uh, what is happening with the, with the current situation. Uh, I, everybody is looking forward to the new normal when we reopen, uh, when we are back in business, right? So um, if we are actually preparing and if we have prepared, uh, we are studying uh, or we have graduated, then this is um, something that you can look forward to. And uh, let's look at a position that is, um, that is out there in the market. So first of all, if there is a uh, position that is um, advertised, you will need to read and understand what is the requirement of that position, of that role. And then what you can do is you match it according to your qualifications and to your experience uh, to see whether uh, you fit in into that. Now, when we are actually talking about uh, looking for a job, what comes first into your mind? Uh, or if you are uh, trying to get a promotion, um, you are new, um, even if you are a student, you know you will be out there in the job market in the future. One very important thing that we all need to have is a CV. Okay, so CV or some call it resume, uh, that is something that is very important. Even if you're a student, you need to start preparing your CV. And uh, basically, um, uh, Mr. Altab will talk about personal branding later, but uh, a CV is also a personal branding that you can have for yourself. So what are the required um, information that that is um, that should be there on the CV. Uh, firstly, the rule is that your CV should not be too short and it should not be too long. Okay, uh, you will just have to meet that, um, you know, the correct uh, gauge in between because if it is too long, uh, I mean, it takes too much time, uh, we have to search for information in there, then uh, that is not the type of CV that you want. Uh, uh, if you go on Google, you will actually 
get a lot of information about um, how a CV is written out. Uh, firstly, it will start uh, with your name. Now, uh, very important for all of us to put our correct names on the CV. Uh, please, um, no, no pet names. Sir. Your name should be exactly as what is on your birth certificate. Because if you really uh, look at it, all your uh, certificates will have your name that is on your birth certificate, right? So uh, make sure your name is correct there. Don't add any surnames. Whatever is in your birth certificate should be on your CV. And have your relevant information there, right? Um, your age will be there. Your uh, context will be there. By your context, I mean your email address, right? Uh, your email address will be there. Your phone number will be there. And uh, please make sure as we go along, you keep your CV updated. Because for a lot of people, uh, what we face is when we actually uh, try go back and con to try and go back, they've applied for a position and we try and contact them. Uh, most of the time, their numbers have changed, but the CV contains the old number. So very important, please remember that. You can note this somewhere if you, if you want, if you are noting, to update your CV and you co have your correct context there. Uh, you will also have your residential address there uh, on that CV. I'm just uh, letting you know what are the important uh, points for your CV. Now your qualifications. You will um, or you will pro uh, before qualifications. It can be either or. Uh, you can have your um, the school you've attended, maybe from primary school onwards, uh, and then you will have your tertiary qualification. So where the qualification goes, um, you know, you can if you look at uh, the relevant CVs that are there on the internet, you can follow through uh, with your qualifications. Maybe your highest qualification first, then it will come down. Uh, let's say you have. Um, you, you, you've um, enrolled in a diploma. If you've completed a diploma, then your diploma will go first, right? Um, or if you ha some, some people will put a diploma there, and later on, when we receive the application, we find out that uh, the person has not actually acquired the diploma, but it is an ongoing thing, or they are currently enrolled in that course. So please ensure if you are putting your qualification on your CV, if you've completed it, put the year. But if it is ongoing, do mention that it is ongoing. Or you can say currently enrolled. And then you can also put how many units you have completed. So that, um, at a glance, um, in organizations, uh, that is very easy to read on CVs. Okay. Uh, that is regarding your qualifications. Now, moving on uh, in your CV, uh, usually you have your hobbies, they are listed as well. Um, you know, your hobbies are important. Uh, that is where you will put in your extra information also, uh, which will show us where your interests lie. And uh, you can have additional information there as well. That if additional information will tell you, um, uh, which I will come to later, there are other things that you can do in the community that can be a part of your CV. Uh, now, the other important thing is your referees. Um, normally, people, um, if you are already working, you will have people from your organization as your referees. Or if you are in school, you will have your high school teachers as your referees, or in tertiary, um, if you are in tertiary institutes, then your, uh, your lecturers from the tertiary institute will be there. But it is very important. They Normally, it's three, three referees. 
it's also important that at least one of your referees is from your community uh, so that uh, you um, you are actually giving us uh, your qualification from your qualification or from your employment and also from your community so this person from the community can vouch for you so this is more like a character reference so uh, it can be if let's say um, you you are part of a um, like a religious uh, community group uh, in your organization from the church group or so you can have one of uh, the executives from that group as your um, referee or for that matter if it's uh, like from a temple then that person can be your referee or anybody from the from the community who is willing to uh, be a referee so uh, it can be maybe a, um, a lawyer that you know from the community a family friend maybe who has known you for a number of years but then the other thing also please remember your immediate family members cannot be your referees eh? uh, so your parents cannot be your referees your brother or sister cannot be your referees eh? uh this is uh not something that is normally um um you know it's 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 not uh something that can be added on to your to your uh, to your cv because uh then they say uh, you know it can be by uh, a biased uh, referee then in your in your cv so you don't want that. You want people uh, who are not immediate family members to be a part of your um, CV. Now, the other important thing about the CV is please have people there uh, who we can contact, who, who employers can contact. So uh, just like what I said about your contact details on your CV, please ensure that the the referees on your uh, on your cv are also reachable there are times when people uh, give us cvs in organizations and when we try and contact the referees um, their numbers have changed right so also important include their emails their email addresses uh, as well as their phone numbers or if their phone numbers have changed and you are aware that it has changed, please update it. Uh, as a norm uh, in organizations or as a rule, what employers do is, if you have given us three referees, uh, one, uh, let's say two from your organization and one from the community, and uh, we are unable to reach your referees, uh, and let's say we know which organization you are working in, we uh, we are not allowed to call anybody else uh, in your organization to check on you we can only call the people that you have put on your reference so if uh, uh sorry on your uh, cv as referees so if we are unable to contact your referees what we will do is we will come back to you because that is ethical uh, it is unethical uh, to call a prospective employees uh, organization for a reference if that person is not listed on that prospective employees cv as a referee right so it's unethical uh, we are not supposed to do that. So we will call back the person, um, our prospective employee, and say, uh, I'm sorry we are unable to get in touch with your, um, with your uh, uh, referee or two of your referees. Can you please give us alternative names and contacts? That's the way we do it. So you see how important it is that you have uh, correct information on your CV. Uh, and um, 
a CV can be maybe two pages or three pages at the most, but please don't go beyond that. Um, you're not writing uh, your history on there. It's just, um, you know, the condensed version of you. So uh, you will have to make sure because not all employers have the time to read five or six pages of CVs. Um, you know, as, my, as our next speaker will also confirm. Uh, so please be, uh, just make sure you are uh, on par with this. And if there's any other thing that you wish to know about your CV, uh, as um, uh, Sunny has mentioned, you can always send us an email later. Now moving on to personal branding, which will be a part, uh, a bigger part of the next speaker's topic. Uh, the person, uh, just to let you know what is personal branding, it is the process of uh, pers uh, your, your personal branding involves finding your uniqueness. So, and building a reputation on things you want to be known for, and then allowing yourself to be known for them. So if it's personal branding, um, you can think about, um, I'll give you two examples. Uh, if you are looking at personal branding, that means that is something that is that person is known for. Okay. And two of our very famous people, Roy Krishna. What is his personal branding? Soka, right? Uh, and uh, how about Jerry Tuai? What is his personal branding? So uh, I'm just giving you examples of what your personal branding is. Huh? Uh, now, if you are looking at this, maybe um, another example I'll give you is somebody who's, who's a very, um, like from high school, your personal branding actually begins from when you are in high school. Then you slowly develop and you know what you are best in. You know, it can be leadership. You can be one of the, um, let's say you are a um, prefect or you are a head boy, head girl. So that is about leadership. Or you've been given the opportunity to be the, the leader or looking after a lab, you know, let's say biology lab, chemistry lab. So, you know, so th those are responsibilities because uh, your teachers have actually recognized that skill in you, that, okay, you are a good leader. Now, otherwise, there are some other things that you can, somebody can be a good orator, right? So you, if you've taken part in a number of oratories, you've won a number of oratories, that is your personal branding. That means you're a very good speaker. You're a very good public speaker. So if I'm, for my organization, I'm looking for a training officer, that is the person I will go for you, go for. And that is something also, personal branding uh, is, these are your highlights, which needs to be a part of your CV. So in your CV, you will note, okay, uh, this year, this year, this was the oratory I participated in, I won in this, you know, uh, and uh, I was the run-up or I won. And so, so all those things, if it's a part of your CV, I will look at it as your personal branding, okay? Also, um, the other thing that I had mentioned and I had, said, I had said that I will come back to it is your role in your community. Don't think you are just in high school or you are just in tertiary level education at the moment and you cannot be a part of your community. Uh, we are wrong there. You can be a very big part of your community straight from um, your you like your young days, you, you youths, you like high school uh, or even um, tertiary. You can be a part of um, social groups, social organizations, NGOs. Uh, you can be a part of your uh, cultural uh, community things that happens. Um, you know, like for, you can be a part of the temple com uh, committee, you can be a part of your monthly, uh, you can, but then I'm not just saying be a part of it, I'm saying you take up roles there, offer your assistance, say, can I, I can be the secretary, I can take notes when there is uh, uh, your meetings going on, I, and you can go in and uh, be a 
committee member as well. So those are the things also that you can put on your CV. So we know how much you are giving back to your community. And it can start when you are still very young. So um, you can be a part of these uh, NGOs. You can be a part of your community, your religious groups. Uh, and um, those. this is where it builds your character. It also uh, brings, it also is very enhancing to personalities. And when we look at CVs and things like that are there, then it makes a lot of difference. Let's say in high school, you've also taken part in chemistry competitions, physics competitions. Uh, whatever, you know, the ministry gives or, uh, you know, and then you've got distinction uh, in maybe in accounting competition you took part in or mathematics. And so from there, if I'm looking at your CV, then your personal branding is accounts or your personal brand. So I know where to place you. I will pick you. Uh, if there is 10 people with that same qualification and you've put in that extra that you've achieved very high, um, you know, academic, apart from academic results, um, your, the competitions that you've uh, taken part in, it's all there. Then that is where I see which side, um, you know, we can put you in, you know, so then that means accounting is your highlight. Or maybe um, uh, there are some other essay competitions you took part in. Then I can say, okay, this person is a good report writer, so let's hire him or her. So those are the things that need to be a part of your CV. Uh, so remember, your CV requires very relevant information and things that puts you above the rest of uh, the people that we are actually uh, interviewing, right? So that is what your employer expects of you. Now, going into the interview proper, um, uh, if you are, let's say, chosen, you've presented your CV, you've chosen for the interview, then your first impression matters. As you walk into the interview room, um, the first impression you make matters. And this means how are you dressed, right? Uh, what is your body language like? When you are speaking, uh, when you are speaking, like how are you speaking? And when you are actually sitting, when you go in and you sit, you are invited to sit, are you sitting up straight? Are you paying attention or are you slouching or are you relaxed? That says a lot about a person. So those are some pointers about um, how you should be during interviews, uh, which uh, Mr. Khan uh, Altab will actually talk to you later about more in depth about the what to expect, you know, during the interviews. And but then uh, another point that I'd also like to uh, tell you, or something to point out, is that it is very important during interviews to listen to listen properly to whatever you are asked, and then you answer. You have to understand the question before you answer. So please uh, develop some listening skills. Uh, those, that is a very important thing, whether it's an interview, whether it's in a normal conversation, uh, to avoid misunderstandings, uh, it's always best that you have very good listening skills because if you have good listening skills that is what uh, will uh, help you uh, and um, be a part of uh, uh, that organization if you answer the questions correctly uh, so that is uh, on on the interview itself now um, i i do believe that i have covered whatever i was uh, trying to cover for you here, and I've gone a bit over my speaking time. So um, I will finish off here. If you have uh, questions, uh, you can always ask in our question and answer session. Otherwise, uh, as uh, Shanil has said, you can send us an email. So thank you very much for listening. I hope I was able to assist you uh, and you know, help you and guide you along. 
uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, madam. Um, I think uh, that was a really uh, good presentation for everyone who is uh, tuned in this afternoon. Um, there's a lot to take on, and I think uh, when you guys go back um, and review whatever you have noted and whatever you have heard this afternoon, you'll be able to see um, how it actually helps you, that how you can actually put it into action and uh, make sure that you are able to uh, perform better in interviews, make better CVs, um, in relation to that as well, um, for our community, um, Viva Community Youth Fiji, um, we also provide services where you can contact one of our admins and we will um, guide you in making your CV. So if you have a CV which is not up to date or you think it is not professional enough, you can always send in an email or messages uh, message to us uh, in the Viber community and we will be more than um, uh, welcome to help you uh, actually make your CVs. Um, so without further ado, uh, I'd like to move on to our next speaker. Um, so, so Mr. Altaf Khan is the Director of Learning and Development for Sofitel Fiji Resort and Spa. Mr. Khan has a vast experience in the service industry working for Shangri-La's Fiji Resort and Spa as a service leader and then becoming the training manager in, uh, for JEX group of companies in 2009 and then becoming the group training manager for Topu's group of companies in 2013. Uh, something that a lot of uh, people here don't know is um, uh, arguably uh, Mr. Altaf Khan has the most number of connections on LinkedIn in Fiji. Hmm. That is something hmm. that uh, we should uh, commend him for. That is that is the that is the example of personal branding. When you talk about personal branding, that is the core example of personal branding. With over twenty five thousand connections, he is the most connected person on LinkedIn. And you, you have, uh, it is evident to you all the heights that he has reached through personal branding. So more on this from uh, uh, Altab himself. Uh, Altab, the floor is now open for you. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Happy Sunday, everybody. I know we don't do those things on Sundays. It's a relaxing day for everyone. But I have a lot to cover, but I have only limited time. So can I kindly ask Shanil if he can um, put the slides on show and um, make some changes to the uh, video presentation so I can have control over the slides. And uh, I don't have that much time to um, deliver the whole content that I have, but uh, what we are going to do is um, uh, send the slides to all of you so it becomes a good reference uh, for all of you and um, you can learn a lot of things out of it at the same time. Um, so, Shanil, can we have the slides um, uh, on, please? Um, okay. So while we are getting ready with this, um, one thing that I want to talk about, which is a living example right now, is this team itself. This team came from nowhere into Bang, some um, like a very big platform today. And the youth Fiji, I was so proud to be engaged with this, and I was so overwhelmed by the accomplishments that they had as well. And um, the, the beautiful thing is um, they we have almost about 2,800 connections on this Viber group. And, you know, this is a very young team of people who have a lot of, uh, you know, passion for technology. And to be honest, I'm learning so much from them because we come from those days where we did things manually, right? Yeah. And... Um, you know, and I'm learning so many things. Sometimes this young crowd get frustrated with me into getting me signed on into things and stuff like this. But that's the flow, right? We learn every day. Learning doesn't stop. And the traditional code goes together with that. We learn from cradle to grave and nothing changes that. OK, so it's a very big congratulations to Shanil Shetty and his team. He has a very dynamic team walking behind the show. And what I want to also highlight is, you know what, these guys don't get paid for doing this. This is what exactly is called going the extra mile if you have to build yourself. 
And this doesn't limit or take away that word personal branding from its context. If you want to achieve something in life, you need to go out there and make a difference. That's the point, full stop, right? So some of us, we wait. We sit down and wait for good things to happen in our lives. Trust me, I usually say this in my trainings. No angels are going to come from heavens above. Grab your hand, take you in the corner and say, Lu Vengu, let me touch you with the magic stick. That only happens in Alice in Wonderland stories, my dear listeners. Okay, so well done. Well done to um, Shanil and his team. And thank you, Zarina. Thank you for accepting our invitation just on a um, like a simple request because the what you have done is actually given the real practical experiential examples because you have been in the HR field for the past 20 years and some of the listeners were not born even then. Mm -hmm. And then you have seen the whole structure changing and evolving and transforming. So what you have shared with us is the reality. And this is going to make a huge difference. It may sound simple and some of you may say, okay, there's nothing to be called rocket science, but these are the small things that we miss out in life, which makes an impact on the decisions that employers make about recruiting you. Okay, I'm not more of a HR, HR practitioner, but yes, I am a human skills developer. I have been training people for years and today I'm going to talk about a few things which are of reality. And the first thing, connecting back with what Zarina has said, is I know not all of us, like this, this presentation is more geared towards the youths, job leavers, new graduates, but it's not limited to everybody who's listening out here, you might have some subtle takeaways for you to go and embed in your current practices and behaviors. I do understand the pandemic has caused a lot of anxieties around us today, and there is a lot of things happening. The entire workforce is changing. So now you may sit back and think, oh my God, what's going to happen? There's so many people who are out of jobs, and that limits our opportunity to get a job. No, 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 no. I want to correct you out there with that kind of thinking. Organizations are now going to look for the cream of the cake. It doesn't mean you are a fresh graduate. It doesn't mean you don't have experience. What matters a lot is what you bring to the table and the value addition, the willingness, the positive vibe, the energy that you are going to expel through any connection that you have with the employees. And that's why, my dear listeners, your personal branding is a very important thing. And, you know, I can't cover everything in the, in the given period of time, but there is loads and loads of information available online. You can go and deal deep dive and explore more on the topics that we are talking about. And later on, eventually, like what Shanil Shetty has said, we might come back for a specific topic to give you online free training. But what's going to be different about our training from other speakers that you may hear on YouTube or from overseas is we bring you the real Fiji talk. We align you with the reality. We align you with what's happening in our own country, our beautiful Isles of Fiji. Okay, before I go more, I know we have anxieties to do with attending interviews. And if you are having, you know, this kinds of anxieties in, in our psychological terms, we call it ergophobia or something around it. But of course, interviews can be intimidating. And now there is a very um, a rapid transformation from face to face interviews into uh, using video conferencing on uh, platforms, which we later on will give you some uh, learning lessons about in the future web us that I and you and everybody else will connect with. Okay, different people have different levels of interview anxiety from very severe to moderate to limited ones, but we can only learn, learn and learn and become better. We don't become perfect. 
we only get better with every experiences that life throws at us. So I've got a little remedy. I just don't want to throw you out there, which is this thought. You know, if when you are attending an interview, whether it's going to be face to face, I doubt it given the um, economic situation right now. But even if you are facing anxiety for interviews um, on the digital platforms, so this is one technique that I want to leave you behind with today. And what you can do before the start of interview, like Zarina has said something very important. She has spoken about proper preparation prevents poor performance. If you are ready, then you are all good. It takes you to prepare for your interviews, okay? So what you can do just prior to the interviews, take three mindful deep breaths and bring your awareness to the sensations of your breathing. Don't think about what's cooking tonight and what mommy is screaming, okay? Ask yourself, what is the current state of mind? What do you feel right now? And most of you say, oh, I'm a little bit scared. I'm a little bit nervous. And of course, that's just human. Okay. Now, what is the desired state of mind you want to be when you present yourself to the recruiters? Right. Think of a moment when you were very confident in your life when you spoke confidently and you were just yourself you were being the real deal you were your authentic self think of it that moment and lock your state of mind to that moment and then you go into the battlefield you know you will feel better it will just bring you a lot more confidence in you okay so i will today talk to you a few things about um I'm navigating through my slide. Uh, Shanil has said so much about digital literacy. Guys, everything is available online. Even how to use Zoom platforms for interviews. There's heaps and lots of resources available for you that you can tap into. Okay, so you need to start making yourself a little bit digital savvy and start getting used to, to the platforms and the things that's happening out there. But there's a bit of things that you need to also be conscious about um, when applying for jobs and what requirements employers might have, such as having Fiji care apps, having temperature checks going on. Your vaccination is very important. You all are very conscious about the government um, regulations on notes. Um, no jab, no job policy. And a lot of organizations are following that very religiously. So you need to make sure that you conform to those standards, which has been set by the various organizations. So here we go. Now, when we talk about um, um, what you call uh, personal branding, it is all about your social awareness. And I'm pretty sure all of us are on social media. Everybody who's the 117 people who are listening right now, I am more than certain that you all have some sort of social media handles and channels out there. And Facebook, uh, Facebook are being the most common and the newborn baby, TikTok. I'm pretty sure all of you are TikToking as well. But ladies and gentlemen, what I want to really share with you today is your social awareness. What you put out there on social media speaks volumes about you. Now, say for example, if you are applying for jobs which requires a higher level of organizational representativeness, you are applying for a marketing job, you're applying for a job where you'll be involved with a lot of stakeholders outside the organization. And if you are somebody who loves to put up negativity on social media, you are just tarnishing your image. Now, you might say, Altab, what are you talking about? That's our personal life. For sure, that's your personal life. But then again, I'm pretty sure you are also understanding where I'm coming from as well. Okay, there is a lot of negativity that's going out on the social media right now. 
And if you are part of it, you might want to reconsider. Right? I'm not judging you. I'm not here to be prescriptive. I'm just here to share my perception, which is in your hands, whether you want to take it on board or not, it's entirely upon you. Ask yourself some questions. If you have, you are not happy about something, don't put it out on social media and become a mimicry of it. Put it, channel it through the right people. And I'm pretty sure somebody's going to get back to you. Ask yourself, whatever you're doing, is it resourceful? Is does this serve me? Does this and does this enable me for bigger and better things in life? Okay. Now moving on. How to define your personal brand? Like what Zarina mentioned, Roy Krishna. There is a lot of people who a lot of organizations who do a lot of brand selling and brand awareness. Right? You are also a brand. Now, what can set you apart is how you carry yourself. What are you most knowledgeable and passionate about? What tone of voice would you like to use? How will you best communicate your message to the target audience? What type of content will you be posting? What is your body language? What do you do outside? How do you be behave outside? What are the language contexts that you have? What do you want to achieve? What is your values? What do you stand for? What do you believe in? It all accumulates into the bigger picture of personally branding you. Okay. Now say, for example, myself and Zarina were having a conversation last night. And when this is one of the things that we were talking about, like, you know, they in the interviews, some of the uh, like when people choose um, people to be interviewed, almost all of them have similar experiences and qualifications, which in our HR context, we say MQR, minimum qualification requirements and the skill uh, criteria and the competencies that's required for that job. Right. But now the big um, question, the million dollar question is everybody else is almost the same like you in the interview that you have. You are contesting for how can you set yourself apart from them? What is your uniqueness? What is your personality? And that's when I bring programs um, uh, to develop people. And um, these are called um, emotional intelligence. OK, so what I will suggest to you is do a little bit um, research on topics such as called emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is quite important today. Gone are those days when we used to say you need to have a degree, you need to have a diploma, you need to have this qualification, you need to have that qualification. We look at people on a triangle now. Your, your knowledge is there, your skill set is there. What connects the triangle together is your passion, your abilities, your personalities, your attitude. This is Something that sets you aside, which is your unique selling point. And I'm pretty sure that a lot of us need to do some work around it to, to make ourselves stand out uh, in front of the recruiters. So when I talk about um, emotional intelligence, what I'm really talking about is your self-awareness, your self-concept. Some of us, we are governed by a lot of beliefs and our mindset. That's fine. That happens through our DNA and that's ascribed at birth. I don't want to get too psych um, uh, psychological over here, but that's what reality is. OK, it's about your self-concept. Have you made have you have you watched your own behavior? Not only on social media, but your the impact that you make on others through your behavior, through your personalities. And that includes what you say, how you say, how you think, how you analyze things, how you make decisions, your speech, and totally your mindset. I study a bit of neuroplasticity, and I am a very strong believer that no matter who we are, what we grew up with, what demographics that we had in life, 
we all can change for the better. And I'm pretty sure you all are going to agree to that. Because if we are not changing, we are not growing, we are not developing, we are not reaching our dreams, our desired state of mind, our desired goals and amb uh, ambitions in life, okay? So your social awareness, then your self-regulations, what can you do to make a little bit of changes, okay? And one of the examples that I gave in one of my training sessions that I had when we observe people. Say, for example, you want, you went on a dinner date, okay? And your, the person that you were dating is so rosy and flowery with you. Oh, my God, they are the sweetest person on earth for you at that moment of time. But that one person does not behave appropriately with the waiter. Now, it's a point of observation about the reality of that person. And that's what I call social awareness in a little context to explain. Okay? And there are many examples that we need to... A person that wants to grow and develop in their life will always try and stop, think, and evaluate their own behavior their own thinking patterns, okay? And this not only helps you to make a better impact on the people around you, but it also helps to shape a better thinking matrix within you, which reprograms you to become a meta self. When I say meta self, it means a higher level of you within the context of your own thinking pattern, your own internal representation. And these are some of the things which gets very well observed during certain psychometric uh, evaluations or we call uh, attitude tests. When you are called for interviews, it can be prior interviews, it can be post interviews, and it can be done digitally, it can be done face to face, and for basic roles that you may go. And what Zarina was referring to, they are behavioral questions which are being able to assess a lot of your emotional intelligence. Those days are gone. We only used to look for IQ, intelligent quotient of a person. If you score 10 out of 10 and your, I, your what you call, um, your GP um, A in the college was skyrocketing. No, 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 no. Those days are gone. In the new world, we require people who is a of a combination, a combo deal, a balance of experience, a balance of uh, academical qualification, and a lot more to do with the soft skills, your adaptability skills, how resilient you are, how much grit you have, how much passion you have, how much of a positive vibes and energy that you carry to yourself. And that contributes to building upon a very stronger um, personal brand of you, how you present Present and represent yourself takes the bigger picture of you in, in, in this context, okay? Now, on the slide, you can see, and um, Zarina made a context. I took a note, and um, she said about being very careful about reading uh, what the requirements of the jobs are. So, on the on the slide, you can see I have done a, a benchmark of qualifications over here. The first one is from the Fiji Qualification Framework, which is benchmarked by the Fiji Higher Education Commission. Um, and then I did an um, international national uh, comparative with that from Australian qualification framework. So you will see they tie in together. And what that means is um, the qualification at the different level almost uh, not almost, is actually the same. So whether you might be applying for a job in Fiji or applying an international job, like you need to understand if somebody says, you know, this um, uh, a particular job requires a level five. So a level five could be a diploma. And then you need to make sure that you are meeting the first, the academical qualification for the job. But don't take me wrong, guys. There are some organizations which are very, very particular about you having that, that particular qualification. Like, so for example, you can't fly an aircraft saying that you are a learning pilot. Otherwise, you know, you'll be flying on no choice airway. 
you can't go and get injected by a doctor who has not completed a, de a degree in the required discipline. Otherwise, you will be injected with something which you don't want me to say. Okay? And likewise, but on the flip side, just to make you feel a little bit better and release some oxytocin, which is good feeling endorphins in your body, they are not all organizations which are so stringent about um, qualifications. Some will, you know, cover it with the experiences that you had in the similar format or similar field and like what Zarina said so beautifully if you are a new graduate if you are a high school student who will be joining the workforce please don't feel that you don't have experience that's a wrong you have done so much sporting activities you've done oratory you have done this you have participated in that in the school you've done red cross walk you've done you know all this other scouts club you play soccer you play netball you play you are engaged with so many things that adds on to your experience because anything that you have we engage with gives you simple um, simple things like uh, communication teamwork cohesion you know uh, meeting your deadlines getting things done so many things out there for you okay so don't be discouraged about it but be very conscious because what what all recruiters I have spoken most of it in Fiji they face that people are not understanding what the requirements of the job is and some people they do have those experiences but in their CVs or in their cover letter they are not able to relate it in the right way and then in the selection process your CV gets uh, left out in the final um, uh, you know metrics that the call is going to be made for an interview so you don't want to, you know, uh, be missed out, right? You don't want to leave any stones unturned, okay? So this little basics we are telling you is very essential for you and uh, and and um, decision making, okay? So I will leave this slide for you. Have a look at it. But I use this format usually when we talk about personal branding and this format links well if you are setting up your LinkedIn account. See guys, LinkedIn today is a number one recruitment platform. Okay, so uh, what IDA format is you need to get attention, build interest and desire and get people to put things into action. So you will read a little bit more about this when the slide reaches you, but that all helps you to build your skill set. I, I call them the X factor. What, what are you so good about? What is your X factor? What sets you apart? And these days, I tell you, they, some of us, we have this thing, we are educated, we have this experience, we have that experience. But when it comes to people skills, that becomes a little bit of area of improvement for all of us, how we connect. You know, sometimes we have a belief that, oh no, this person, I don't want to connect with this person. Oh, that person looks weird. I don't want to be the first one saying hello to this person. And some people find it a little bit too flamboyant right but that that creates different kinds of perceptions about you you know you need to be passionate you need to have some bit of flamboyancy out there some hype some energy level some vibes in you you know you need to rock it you are unique you are different nobody is like you you can still make yourself somebody who can get super glued to you but in the right way Okay, I, I, I want to make a clarity around that place, though, as we speak here. So what is your, your X factor, your unique selling point? How are you an excellent team fit when you're looking into either doing your LinkedIn or going into jobs? What is your value creation? What do you bring to the table? How can you make a change? What is your point of difference? These are some of the things you read on my slide. My slide will exactly give you some examples. Let me show you, but I won't be able to go through it right now being time bounded. I'm giving you examples on how to um, introduce yourself. And you know, the, the biggest factor where you can sell yourself, dear listeners, is when you are answering that question, tell me about yourself. Some people, when it comes to that question, say, I come from Raki Raki. We grow bananas over there. 
Okay, I have five children, one on the way. Are everything is written on your CV. We don't want to know that. We want to know why, why you? Because if you nail it right there with that question, oh boy, you got it rolling for you. Okay, this is the crucial question. Some of us, when we do, when we prepare ourselves for interview questions, we don't look at these questions because you say, I, I know myself. I've done a degree over here. I've done this. I've done that. I come from Kulu Kulu. I come from the Sori Highlands. And, you know, that's what I'm going to say. No, this is the thing, guys. If you nail this, you have one half of the interview. I'm pretty sure Zarina agrees to this because this is what she told me yesterday on a conversation we had. And then moving on to the next one, it explains what to say while you're still explaining yourself. Why do you qualify for this role? And then I'm also giving you an example and these examples, you can customize it. Please don't copycat this and you might sound like what's written over here and then you know that just doesn't do the magic for you okay and uh, one 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 example that i want to read out to you like you know giving the full example okay and uh, that would be um for the recent graduates eh? i am a recent graduate for, from fiji national university and have couple years of experience as a volunteer or seasonal job at XYZ. Most recently, I applied my learning from my program at school to develop a system for my workplace. I'm a person who thrives in a fast-paced environment. So right now, I'm looking for an opportunity to apply my knowledge and skills along with my creative problem-solving skills at an innovative organization like yours. Wow! Don't you think people will get wowed by it, just like how my wow went? I'm quite sure you're going to ring some bells. Okay, so use these examples, customize it, do a little bit more research, and you will definitely do wonders for yourself, okay? And uh, the power of LinkedIn, I know Shanil is giving me that bad look over there. It's giving me digital bad look. I'll tab your time is over. But I will still speak a few more words before I retire. Okay, LinkedIn has a great job board. Let me repeat my soul. Use your LinkedIn to tell a story and build your personal brand. I, like what Shanila said, I'm very active on LinkedIn. One of my friends was saying, Altab, do you think you own LinkedIn? My reply was, no, I just rent a space out there. <laughs> okay. So living the jokes apart, I have seen, this is my personal, um, when we recruit people, we do go and tweak. You know, what, what do you call stalk people? Okay, I just want to say it in a very nicer way. We do visit profiles to, to, to see, you know, who we are actually interviewing or who we are onboarding in our organization. Okay, so some of the LinkedIn have missing pictures. Some of the LinkedIn won't have a complete information about your education, about you, about who you are. If you want to see a perfect example, see Chanel's. I told Chanel, Chanel to put up an example, but we don't have that much time right now to do that. But go and stalk this guy. I'm also learning from him. Stalk him on LinkedIn. His name is Chanel Shetty. Okay, and see, he's got the best layout in whole of Fiji and universe. Okay, when you are building your LinkedIn profile, you need to think about this. Who are you and what do you want to be known for? Some people have their pictures with their pet dog. I mean, this is sensitive to you. Some people have a picture with they went on a picnic to Plantation Island or to a place unknown to the, what do you call the, that triangle where all the ships fall, whatever it be. Okay. You want to have a good representation. Your picture is your power. It says a lot about you how you present yourself out there, okay? It may sound something very simple to you, but it holds uh, 
you know, a lot of weight when people view you and, and different people have different kinds of perception about it, you, right? Your profile embrace your most important skills experience and abilities in the upper level in your profile this means your cover uh, picture your profile picture your headline see linkedin is just like looking at a digital uh, bio data of a person it has everything and it has such platforms where certain jobs you can just click easy apply and your whole portfolio goes to the recruiters just like you are emailing your um uh, um, what you call your applications online. So how beautiful is that, having that channel? And that's something that Shanil and his team is also preparing, okay? So read uh, the context of this um, presentation out there and see if it can help you, okay? And uh, let your skills known. Every little thing that you were engaged with, whether it was a paying job, it was just a volunteer work, it's any certifications that you have, any achievements that you have, it might connect back to some of the abilities and the skill sets that dif different recruiters are looking for, okay? And um, write a headline that rocks. And this headline is a little uh, below your, um, your uh, title and your pictures and stuff. Your headline is just not your job title. Instead, use that space to concisely communicate the core of who you are as a professional in a sentence or in few phrases. The more specific you can be about what sets you apart from the competition, the better it becomes for you. Highlight specific skills you want to be known for and try to write something encompassing your professional career identity, who you are and where you want to go. And there is a good example. I, you know, maybe this refers to more of the training people in the system. Registered training officers specializing in hands-on learning, classroom teaching, digital learning, and draw on 10 years working in international brand resorts. So it just says a little bit more in detail with that opening sentence about you. And that might interest a person who's trying to browse through your profile. And the thing at the bottom you'll see, even if you are uh, just an entry person, see that include a job entry even when unemployed. So you can read the context on the slide and you can update it accordingly to that. Okay. So there are, have been some new features and like what Shanil has said, you know, you can also um, like, you know, how there's different things that happens on Facebook and, you know, we said we got the jab and we changed our pictures to that little, um, um, what you call uh, photo um, out, uh, outlay. Okay. Uh, you know, LinkedIn has this option where you can say uh, it has a open to work. And once you do that, then recruiters know, okay, this guy or this person is open to work. And guess what? In our days, these are some of the things me and Zarina must have missed out. It's not that I'm saying we come from a very, you know, early generation. We're still young, okay? Now, in our days, we didn't have exposure to this kind of things. Look at this, guys. Look at it. Look at it. LinkedIn has 600 free courses that you can do and get your certifications. Where would you get this? Okay, and then it gives you little badges that you can be proud of and display on your profile. Don't just sit back and wait for magic to happen and keep blaming the pandemic. I'm pretty sure some of us, we have been, oh my God, the pandemic has done this. The COVID has ruined our life. What can we do? Maybe it's a blessing in disguise. This is the time for us to build ourselves, do some, you know, uh, get involved in education, upgrade ourselves. I understand you might not have that much financial support, but then again, look at YouTube, look at Google. They have many any learning platforms out there. Look at LinkedIn. Look at such things that people, innovators, futuristic innovators like Chanel and his team has got for you. Take advantage of all these free resources. And one thing beautiful about LinkedIn, when you sign up proper, it has interview prep 
embedded within some of the things that you can take away from LinkedIn. How wonderful is that? So why would you not want to take advantage of all these free resources which is available to you? Okay. All right. I'm just about to finish, Chanel. Please allow me a few more minutes. Okay. Yes, so true. I think I think the uh, the viewers are really encouraged and they are more than happy to stay a little longer just to hear a few more words from you. So uh, feel free to uh, take as much time as you want. Thank you. Okay, okay that word few just sounds so limiting, uh, uh, limiting to me, Chanel, but it's all right. I accept it. Uh, let magic happen. I always talk about authenticity. I always talk about magic. If you want to personally get in touch with me to, you know, build yourself, look, we are voluntary out there. We are also using this opportunity to give out to the community what the community has given back to us and i'm copying uh, i'm copying all these um traits from my friend zarina over here she motivates me she does so many things and you know i feel motivated sometimes i'm just trying to benchmark myself and this is how we grow in life we learn from each other in the community learning never stops don't be a person with that kind of mindset oh i don't want to copy that one i don't want to learn from that one or i don't want to do this because people will think i'm a copycat nobody pays you you are your own uh, individual person and nothing takes all these things away from you either become on linkedin become an active user some people are on linkedin they will just enjoy everybody else they would never push a like or never react and or never send requests see you can't just sit on linkedin and thinking that people will start adding you no you have to start adding people of the similar discipline or, or the similar field of interest that you have. I'll give you an example about myself and what it has really benefited me, like how Chanel has said, I have a lot of connections and it, it has really helped me, guys. It has really enriched my learning abilities through LinkedIn. I've been here for like about three, four years to get to that stage, though. But um, I, am st um, I am prospecting to become a cognitive behavioral therapist, which is a form of um, a, a practice of psychology uh, in the coming future so I'm learning to become one in the future so I connect with this very famous um, psychologist her name is Susan David and Susan David is the psychologist of Harvard Medical University and I have learned more from her on LinkedIn than actually I have learned for, through my academical resources and I use the learning into my current career when I design programs, when I, as a con I do training consultancy for organizations in Fiji, when I go out into trainings, I use her resources as well. And this is just like learning, free learning for me. And I suggest that we start connecting with people and learn from each other. Don't be afraid to send requests to people. Sometimes we are intimidated. Of course, there are some people who won't accept. That's life. There are some people you send requests, they won't accept. But what you can do in that case, there is a button that you can click on. There is an option where you can just follow that person. So what that means is, you know, you can see the post from that person. You know, start engaging yourself into it. Don't be a silent, you know how we say, a silent person on the social media. Start engaging, start connecting, start liking. There's so many posts that people run on LinkedIn. Start getting active into it. Start posting some codes. Start posting some statements, but no hate speech. Remember, LinkedIn is a professional site. Is nothing as comparable to Facebook. So if you see a beautiful person out there, you can't, you know, start engaging with them for a relationship. No, that's not what it is for. It's for professional engagement. Don't spoil your name by doing those things. Like, you know, I, I do get such kind of requests sometimes as well, where people are trying to engage with you in a different way. But then again, it's at your discretion how you want to handle those requests, right? Publish your content around your passion or your expertise. Join groups. 
and this is a brilliant way to meet people with similar profession. Don't just add, you know, we have a bad habit in Fiji, I notice. I don't want to say bad habit, you know, a practice in Fiji. We only want to add people that we already know. Ari, if I know Zarina, I talk to Zarina on Facebook, I know everything, uh, you know, we are close by, connect, you know. That's it. We know each other. But why not? Let's know some other people and see the world from their perspective, what people are doing in other countries, what people are doing in other organizations, what people are doing in other universities and how. But just don't learn things and just put it over there and leave it on a valet parking. When you learn something, when you observe something, take it, implement it in your life. Nobody's going to do that for you. You need to only make your own changes. And you can only make changes if you decide to make changes in your own life, in your own career. Nobody ain't going to do that for you. You are your own catalyst of change remember that okay so this is what i have and i want to finish off by a very important code Co not code Co uh, code that i have lived my life with in in the field of learning and development and being a, a specialist in that discipline i repeat the code before you this afternoon your smile is your logo. Your personality is your business card. Now, how you leave others feeling after having an experience with you becomes your trademark. We'll just move on to uh, question and answer session. I think. Uh... So there, there are a couple of uh, people who have raised their hand uh, and we are also getting uh, questions in chat. So uh, if you have put the question uh, prior to this, uh, please, if you can just copy and paste it again so that we don't have to go all the way there. Um, but I think one question that Madam, I'd like to um, highlight on behalf of uh, one of the uh, participants. Yeah. Yeah. Is the. Um, this is a question by Crystal. Um, often at an interview, I am asked how much pay uh, are you expecting? How do I reply to this question in a correct manner? Uh, OK, uh, thank you for that question. A good one. Um, and uh, actually, uh, we really need to know during interviews, what is the salary range you are looking at? Uh, if you weigh or if you become the successful candidate so the best way you can answer this is say uh, okay um currently i'm in this range of pay right you don't if you don't wish to you don't really have to tell us um how much you are actually getting paid but you can give us a range and then you can tell us that this is the range i'm looking at uh at the moment so then um you know whatever range you have in mind you let us know because remember uh the interview panel will give their recommendation uh to uh whoever is the one who will make that uh who will do that final signature on that recommendation so normally the panel will recommend and say uh this is our best candidate uh for this position and in the interview this is the salary range that was indicated. So you can say, uh, I'm looking at a salary range of, let's say, 25 to 30,000, but uh, towards the higher range. So then we will think, okay, so uh, the person is actually looking at uh, maybe 28 or maybe 27, or, but uh, like more than 27. So that is what we will communicate to that person who is actually signing that um, final, who has the final say. And then, uh, you know, we'll see if uh, we can meet that range. So um, that is the best way you can answer it. Just say, I'm currently in this range and this is what I'm looking at because uh, I'm actually looking at uh, moving from where I am at the moment. Uh, to take up this new challenge, and this is my expectation. 
so but it's it's not uh, um, you know don't feel bad about putting your expectation to the floor because uh, we expect candidates to tell us what the expectation is and it's it's really not wrong if you are actually telling us uh, you know some people will say oh i'm not, i haven't really thought about it and i really um, you know whatever goes uh, um, but uh, I think it's best if you give us a, uh, a range uh, that we can look at and we can fit you in. So the best way is to give a range and just say, this is what I'm looking at. Thank you, Madam. I, uh, Crystal, I, I hope answer. that answers your question, Crystal. Yes, um, okay. Um, so there are a couple of hands um, that are up as well. So before we move on to those people, there are some questions in the chat as well. Um, so Suhana is asking uh, if you could explain the purpose of a cover letter, simply what all needs to be included in it and what should it reflect? Uh, OK, so for a cover letter, uh, normally when a vacancy is advertised, it will say vacancy number so and so. Right, vacancy number so and so, uh, and uh, it will have the title of that vacancy. So when you are actually put uh, uh, putting up that cover letter, have that in your um, reference and just say uh, vacancy number uh, and the vacancy, and then just you can say with reference to the above vacancy, I wish to, uh, you know. Um, give my interest for the role uh, and then whatever you put in there uh, and it's important also to put your qualification because then when we look at the cover letter and we say okay so this person is fulfilling that required the qualification and the work experience if that is part of uh, of that uh, uh, the vacancy then please uh, ensure to have it in your cover letter uh, because then that will make that it will make it easier for the interview for the panel or for the people who are actually doing the shortlisting. So we will know yes, you have that qualification, you have that experience, and this is the position that you apply that you are applying for. In some organisations, you see there is, there will be a lost list of vacancies that will come out and which are closing on the same day. So your cover letter letter will help us. Uh, to know, okay, this is the position the person is applying for. Uh, this is, uh, uh, you know, where, um, and you can also put, you know, where you are from in that. Uh, and uh, so, you know, so then we know where you are and uh, the, that's the position that you're applying for and you have the qualification and work experience. And if if you want, you can also put there current uh, your current role. Uh, your current role should also be included so that we know uh, that you are in a similar position in a um, different organization, uh, and then uh, so we'll we'll gauge from there your experience. And if there's anything uh, else in that. Um, um, where you know the minimum qualification requirement and experience. Uh, let's say you are driving, for, uh, you are applying for a heavy goods driver role. If somebody is a driver and uh, the requirement is a group six, then you will also put on, on your cover letter that you do have a group six license. Just giving you an example. So those are the things that you need to put on the cover letter. It's important. Cover letters are important uh, because that is a actually a brief of your whatever you have in your CV, right? So that at a glance we'll know what is there. Then uh, we'll say okay, we'll shortlist this person, and then we will look at uh, whatever your CV says. So it is important that we have all the information there. Uh, you can also add your phone number at the bottom or at on top your mobile contact uh, for easier access. However, this will also be part of your um, CV. So, Suhana, I hope that uh, answers your question. 
Okay, uh, thank you, madam. Um, so moving on to uh, the next question. Um, so Chris Kumar is asking, oh, okay, B before that, uh, oh yeah, Chris Kumar is asking, um, uh, how to answer properly when the interviewing panel asks you, why should we hire you? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, the personal branding comes. Sir. Uh, when we uh, ask you, <clears throat> why should we hire you? That is when you should highlight uh, your, um, your strengths to us. Okay, uh, like what Altab has said earlier on also that, you know, there'll be uh, maybe five people or 10 people with the same work experience and the same qualification. So what is there that you have that we will uh, actually, um, you know, get that, that value from, from, the, from you? So you can there just say, um, okay, this I'm I'm a punctual I'm very punctual uh, I'm reliable I you know I'm uh, uh, which you know my uh, my referees will um, uh, tell you about all that and then you can say this is what I will bring into your organization and uh, I will add value this is how I will add value to your organization so we want to know what extra or what do you have. Uh, that the organization will benefit. And uh, that's the best way. See, you sometimes, uh, you know, in normal conversations, people will say, okay, uh, you know, this person is just talking too much about his or herself. But in that interview, when you are asked, why should we hire you? That is when you really need to sell yourself. Huh? And I'm saying that that is when you need to talk about yourself. You need to say, I'm good at this. And this is how your organization will benefit. Um, because there you can also say, for this is what I've done in my previous organization, and this is where I will continue. Um, I hope that answers that question. Thank you, Madam. For Chris, um, yeah. Um, so um, there's another question from uh, Anishma. Uh, she's asking, uh, usually I have seen people asking for an expression of interest instead of a cover letter for a job application. What is the difference between a cover letter and an expression of interest? Uh, actually, there is no difference. Uh, expression of interest uh, where, you know, some people will term it as a cover letter. Some people will say expression of interest because it. It does the same job, actually. Uh, it's just showing that you are applying for that position. And basically, it will um, have everything. Um, it will be the same. You will say uh, that which uh, position, where you are at the moment, uh, what your qualifications are, what your experiences are. And, uh, you know, you're, you are just expressing your interest or you are just applying for the position. So it's the same, Anishma. Um, Unless um, that expression of interest tells you, uh, you know, these are the things you need to outline in your expression of interest, then you will do it accordingly. Um, otherwise, it's basically the same thing. Um, there is a question from uh, Arti. Uh, she's asking, the, sometimes the HR uh, asks us, do you have any questions for us? Is there a psychological reason behind it, or it's just a general question? Uh, no, there is no psychological reason behind it. It's uh, actually, um, you know, by it's ethical uh, for that interview panel to actually give you the opportunity as well. Uh, it can it cannot just be a one way traffic, right? Um, we will ask you what we want to ask you, but then I'm sure applicants also have, uh, you know, they also have some queries that uh, by the time the interview ends has not been cleared. So uh, it gives the opportunity for the per for that person to ask questions. Maybe they want to know how long will it be before uh, they get to know the outcome, or they want to know whether all who are interviewed will uh, be told whether they are successful or not successful, or they will uh, want to know, uh, okay, if the position is based 
here and I'm, you know, uh, elsewhere, um, is there a possibility of me taking on the same role in another location? That is if the organization has other locations. So those are the things that uh, applicants uh, wish to clarify. Um, then uh, we, we, they need to be given that, uh, that opportunity to clarify whatever they have. And it's good to ask questions. Um, that is, uh, or if you have, I just say, uh, you know, the, the uh, one tip that I would like to give you is uh, when we ask you that question, uh, is there anything else that you wish to know? Or, you know, if you don't have a question, that's okay as well. But don't say, no, I don't have a question, uh, not at this moment. You can put it in a better way. You can say, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. But whatever questions I had uh, has been cleared during the interview. So at this moment, I do not have anything extra to add. So that is a better way of saying it. Huh? I think that is a really good uh, explanation of uh, the particular question. Um, so Andi Mere has a question. Uh, should you also include sporting achievements in your CV if you do not have relevant achievements such as winning the oratory? Uh, see, normally, um, I mean, like I've been part of an, uh, I mean, we normally are part of a oratory that we run every year. What we do is uh, we also have participation certificates that we give to the, uh, to the, um, to those that participate. So you can have that on your CV as well. You can say participated. That's fine. Uh, uh, as long as you have that participation certificate, we, you can clarify. That's fine. Even if you have not won the oratory, uh, remember it takes courage to go out there on stage and speak. So if you have, that's also an achievement. If, if you have participated, you can also add that. Thank you, Marie. Um, so now since most of the questions, uh, all of the questions in the chat are answered, um, there are some hands that have been raised. So I'm going to give this opportunity. I'm going to enable your mic, starting with uh, uh, Divesh. I'm going to allow your mic. Uh, so yeah, your mic is allowed now. You can unmute yourself and uh, ask your question. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my, uh, my I have uh, two questions. Uh, so first on the interviews. So there are some of us, uh, some candidates who uh, like repeat the question before they answer the question. So do you think that is a good practice or it is a bad practice? Uh, well, you are not marked down for that uh, if you do repeat the question. Uh, maybe some people do have the habit of, you know, when, uh, where, if they repeat the question, then they understand it better. Uh, so it's not, not something that you will be marked against. It can be just a habit that people have. So we don't mark uh, people against, uh, against it if they repeat a question. You know, that's just for their clarification. Okay, madam. Okay. Uh, so the second question is on our CVs. So, like, uh, if I have my character references from, uh, like, primary school and high school, should I, like, edit in my CV? Uh, well, as I said uh, earlier about the CV, uh, if those people, if your teachers are still around, uh, and if you have uh, their context, the updated ones, then go ahead. We don't mind. Uh, and as long as uh, they remember you personally. So that's fine. Uh, put them there. Uh, otherwise, uh, you know, if uh, you feel that maybe you've lost contact with that teacher, uh, you may not have the, um, you know, the updated context, then uh, you might want to update your reference. But if you still are in contact with the person, then go ahead. It's not a problem. Okay. Thank you very much, madam. That's thank you. All from uh, Sakshi, I'm going to allow your mic. 
Uh, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Yeah. Um, good afternoon. And uh, I would like to first of all thank the speakers for such a beautiful and wonderful context they have shared with us. It was like I was sitting in a lecture room for Mr. Khan. It was so enjoyable. Really, I appreciate whatever you have shared. So I don't have a question that I would like to impose. It's basically a request to the youth PG. Um, as a year 13 student, and I speak on behalf of all of the high school year 13 students today, the COVID crisis have actually increased a lot of stress around us. And personally, I believe that I was also one of them. A lot of stress, a lot of anxiety has been created to some of the, the issues that we're constantly facing, right? Like keeping connected with our education, classroom education. Some of us have been really um, misfortunate or unfortunate to be attending those stuff and also our exams. So we are very much um, petrified for our upcoming exams to actually prepare for it. So just a request for youth PG, how can you actually help us to actually overcome these anxiety, this stress that we're going through? Just a request to impose some of the in initiatives for year 13 students. Um, OK, so uh, this is uh, something that we are looking into as well, because uh, when we talk about the youth, um, the general age for youth in PG is 16 to 35 years old. So. From that onwards, people, a lot of people are questioning uh, that age group, right? They're saying, uh, why is it 16? Why is it for 21? Because at 21, you start walking. Why isn't you subjected to 21 uh, years old and so forth? The reason is what you're going to do um, when you're 21 depends on the decision you make when you're 16. That is basically when you are in year 11. True. So whether you take science or arts, it all depends on that particular time uh, point in time where you make the decision. Now, for year 13 students, um, that is something that I would agree on. Um, now, uh, we are really uh, working with Altab at this point where we are getting webinars, not just about uh, these topics as well. For, uh, uh, you know, uh, I think uh, Altab has discussed this with me as well. We are uh, getting someone from, uh, uh, I think, from. Uh, Alta, was this uh, the psychology uh, something seminar? Yes. That, uh, with, mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, yeah. I mean, it does that. Uh, like uh, that particular webinar will really help uh, uh, broad down and guide you guys in uh, uh, tackling those situations. Also, um, I think uh, it has come to my attention as well that maybe there is a webinar that has been organized by one of the universities. I think that is University of Fiji. It is about online stress management. So if I get that link and if I'm able to uh, put that link forward uh, to you guys, then I will put it forward because it is really important for everyone to uh, be uh, sane at this time. Be really yes. sane. Wrong decisions are being made at this point in time just because of those anxiety stress. levels. Of stress, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay, one more you? that I'm, yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, I'll just conclude this. Um, so just something that I would uh, like to say to the year 13 students, um, you don't need to worry about uh, uh, all those things that are there for you. Um, if, if there is something that is bothering you, something that is causing stress in regards to which university you need to go to uh, and all this uh, thing, Youth Fiji is there to help you. You can always message an admin. They'll be more than happy to guide you. We are actively working with the university reps as well. Um, I think um, a lot of people are not aware of this, but uh, I'm I'm also working with the University of Fiji. Uh, and then we have other reps from other universities. So it'll really help if, if you'd like to uh, learn more about how we can help you or if there are certain things. And now you guys know that uh, there is actually a community that is our community, which will help you find jobs. So even for university students as well, if, if you uh, if you are at the stage where you are worried that you have graduated and now you don't have a job, uh, you, there's nothing to stress about. You can always reach out to us and we'll help you prepare your CVs and uh, we have uh, these webinars as well. So I think uh, Altab can share more insight on this because he, is, uh, he has more knowledge and more experience in regards to this as well. So I'll move this uh, uh, platform to Altab. Thank you. 
Uh, hi, um, Chanel, thank you. To answer that question, I, if I'm not wrong, I have seen the Ministry of Education, um, uh, the learning platform that they have put forward, it has some guidance on uh, uh, stress management and anxiety, if I'm not wrong, if I had seen it over there. But um, if you are an adult over here and you want to connect with that question and, and see what you can get out of it, is try and uh, search for this uh, word and the resources are available online. Even, even to um, uh, the person who asked this question, you might get some help on uh, YouTube. Uh, try and type this, uh, write this word down. I'll put it on the uh, chat page as well. It's called Neuro Linguistic Programming. So there is various um, YouTube channels which will really help you to understand how you can um, reduce your anxiety and your stress level and change your mindsets to a more healthier and resourceful state. So it's called NLP. So you can type NLP and whatever your um, your anxiety or the current situation that you are facing on hand is, and it will direct you to some resources which can be very informative and actually they are live videos which can really help you, you know, get better at it. We will end the webinar um, there uh, with positive uh positivity that we have brought to all the youth that joined us today. I'd like to thank uh, Mrs. Zarina B and uh, Mr. Altab Khan for joining us uh, this afternoon. Um, like everyone would agree, this was a really, really um, amazing webinar in the sense that a lot of youth learned something that uh, no one might have uh, told them before. And they even had the platform to ask questions regarding some of the things that uh, might uh, prove key when they are applying for a job. Um, so I think uh, it really it really shows uh, how much influence these uh, webinars actually have uh, for one's growth. And uh, humbly, really, um, with, uh, with all the gratitude, thank you, Madam, uh, and thank you, Mr. Altab. Uh, I think everyone has loved this webinar. That's why we can see still so many people, uh, although we have exceeded the one hour mark, there are still so many still people with who us. Are still with us and they are uh, more than happy to uh, stay with us for maybe longer. But um, unfortunately, this is the time that we have for you guys. Uh, so just for your for further questions, we are not stopping you guys. We are not uh, uh, going to hold you here. There is an email that is webinar at youthpg.org. You can always send an email to that uh, email address and that particular question will reach the speakers and they will uh, contact you with the, yeah, they will respond you respond to your question. So and also uh, you can see that Mr. Altab Khan is an active member of our Viber community. Anything you can just put forward in our Viber community. I'm I'm quite sure that he will be more than happy to answer your uh, questions in the Viva community itself.